Hello and welcome back. After talking about good notes, it's time for me to talk about notability. I'll be going through the features that notability has so that you can decide for yourself whether you want to buy notability and use it as a note taking app. As per usual, I will link timestamps in the description down below so you can skip to any part that you find relevant to you. Without further ado, let's get started. So when you open up notability, you will come to its default page right here. On the top right, you can choose to import stuff, or you can create a new document, which by default creates a default page for you. You can set your default note paper by going to the settings on the bottom left, clicking on, clicking on document, and now you can select your default page. I'll just go through the settings very briefly. So first you have the auto backup option, so you can choose to backup your notes, your accounts, as well as iCloud. You have a few different themes to choose from, so light, dark, dark blue as well as jet black. There are also other things that you can choose at the notability shop but I'll show that a bit later. So when you click a document you can select your default note paper. For typing you can select your default typing settings. We also have some handwriting features for you to select as well as a password for you to include in your notability notes. Although I'm left-handed, I don't use the left-handed mode because you will drag the toolbar to the bottom. So for example as you can, as you can see right here, the toolbar is currently on the top, but if you go back and you select the left-handed mode, then you drag the toolbar to the bottom, and I find it very uncomfortable to use it when it's on the bottom. So you can also choose to keep the iPad awake, some text-to-speech settings, as well as including passwords for your web clips. So now let's talk about the note-taking features, first up being the pen. The pen comes in a few different sizes, as you can see right here. And there are also different types of writing style that you can have. So first is the ballpoint one, where it does not affect, where the pressure sensitivity does not affect the writing. And for the second one, the pressure sensitivity will affect it. You can also draw dotted lines. First up is the horizontal kind, and also the circular kind. So notability comes with a few preset colors. But you can always choose to add more if you want to by clicking the plus icon right here. So you can drag the slider around and select the color that you want. Another feature that it has is the ability to recognize color on the page itself. So if you click on this pin icon right here just below the, the color itself, then you can select the color that you want. So for example, if I want the red color right here, then I just click on the tick icon and you'll add the color, you'll recognize the color and add it into my palette. So if you select the straight lines as well as the shapes detection feature, then you can draw straight lines or shapes by holding down the pen. For example, right here. So if you hold it down, you will draw the straight line. The same goes for shapes. You can even adjust the dimensions. Another feature that Notability has is the ability to add your favorite size and colors of the tools that you use. So for example, if I really like this size as well as this color, I can add it to my favorites right here. And it will show down here. You can include up to 12 of them, as you can see right here. As well as the fact that you can also drag this tool around so that you can put it anywhere you want. You can put it here, at the top, at the bottom, or the left. So you have up to 12 selections. This is not only limited to the pen itself, but you can also choose it for erasers as well as the highlighters. So this is very useful in the sense that you don't have to keep going to your palette, your pen or highlighter to manually change the color. For colors and sizes that you use frequently, you can add it to your favorites bar and you can switch it quite quite quickly. So this will prove to be a subtle increase in your type, in your writing speed. So if you don't want to see the bar anymore, all you need to do is just press the cancel at the bottom and then it will disappear. And you can click the star icon on the lower left and it will appear again. So moving on, I'll talk about the highlighter. So the highlighter functions quite similarly to the pen with a few sizes to choose from, the same types of writing that they allow you, different colors to choose from, some are some already preset, and you can set new colors if you want, using the same functions as the pen. The highlighter also has the same whole features as the pen to draw straight lines as well as shapes, for example right here. And then drawing a straight line. So moving on to the eraser, you have a few different sizes to choose from as per usual. And you can also select whole and partial erasing. So for partial erasing, it will erase the parts 
where your pencil went through as a, and follow through. But for the whole erasing, so if let's say you make a continuous line as shown on the left, by erasing any part, you erase the whole thing away. So that is whole erasing. So just like the pen and the highlighter, you can also select your favorite eraser settings so that you don't have to keep going to the eraser icon to change the settings of the eraser. So moving on to the lasso tool, Notability has two lasso tools for you. First is the free path one, and the second is the rectangular one. So let me just illustrate it with the free path one first. So just surround your items that you want to move or edit with the lasso tool, and you can freely move it around. If you select on it, you can also choose to edit it, so things like the style, duplication, and etc. So if you click on style, you can also edit the stroke itself, so you can make it thinner or larger. And you can also change the type of writing that you wrote, so things like the dotted lines or the circular kind, or even the color itself. So yeah, if you have drawn something, you can also fill the color with it. So you want to fill green, you can fill green blue, etc. Now you might be wondering, why would you ever choose to use the rectangular one over the free path one, since the free path one will offer you much more flexibility? Well, one useful advantage that I find the rectangular one has over the circular one is when you need to transfer stuff that are very closely tied together and by don't want to include the stuff outside of it. So let me show you an example right here. So as you can see right here, I've opened up a type document on the right. So let's say I want to transfer some stuff from these five lines over here to my document on the left. But I only want to include the top three lines right here. So if I were to use the free the free path lasso tool, then I have to very specifically drag it out. Copy it, then go over here and then paste it. So you can see after I paste it, you can see that there's very there's very little bits of text that were copied, but it's like unintentional. So because the free path one will need you to have a lot more a lot more dexterity in transferring the items. But on the other hand, if I were to use the rectangular one, so the accuracy doesn't need to be that much because I can just select it up to the point, copy, and then paste it. So as you can see, it's much more accurate in the sense that I will not include any stuff that I don't want to select. When I'm transferring documents that are very they are tied very closely to one another. If you have any other useful tips on the rectangular lasso tool, do share it down in the comments down below too, because I would like to know as well. So this hand icon that you see right here simply prevents you from making changes to the document. Nothing too fancy right here. So for the audio recording feature right here, it's one of the more prominent features of notability. It allows you to record real time of what is going on when you do down your notes. So just press on it and you can start recording stuff and continue writing stuff while you're recording the audio. And you can press it again to stop it. So anytime you feel need to record audio again, you can just press the icon once more and you'll start recording stuff as you write down stuff too. So you press it once again to stop recording. So to view your recordings, you can just click on this drop down bar right here. You can choose to adjust the speed and even go backwards or go forward. It will note down the stuff that you have written as well as the audio that has been recorded at that point in time. So if you click on this wavy stuff right here, you can edit the clips. So this is a list of recordings that you have made. So if you press on edit, you can change the recording name to whatever you like. And you also edit the length of the clip. If you press on select, you can also move the position of the clips as well as merge them together or delete them by clicking on either options. So to type text, you will select this T icon at the top. It will give you the basic settings that you have selected on the main page itself, but you can always edit it on the site and change the font and whatever. So if you look at the toolbar right there, from left to right, the tick icon will let you add checklist and the left and right arrows will let you move left and right respectively. For the middle part, you can adjust the font the size, the color, as well as book italicize and underline your words. For the ABC with the heart shapes, it will let you select your favorite font styles. So for example, you can click on A and then hold it down. And now you can select a font favorite that you typically use. So you can select up to three of them, namely ABC. 
This lets you type faster since you don't have to frequently switch between font styles as much if you can, if you can select your favorite styles. Most right, which is the triple horizontal line, it can let you have more options other than checklist. So you can add things like bulleted list as well as numbered list. By holding onto the toolbar, you can also choose to edit it. So you can shift stuff around or give bring stuff in and out. So it allows for greater customization. So if you want to import pictures, documents, and etc., you'll click on this plus icon right here. So you'll see the list of stuff that you can import. So photos, camera, documents, GIFs, back clip, as well as stickies. So just choose whatever that suits your needs. So moving on, I'll just talk about some other features. If you click on this rewind button right here, you can also use it as a way to edit your mistakes. If you tap and hold it, you have the option to redo it, which means to go forward instead. If you click on the triple horizontal dots above, we have more options available. So for the paper, you can edit your current paper layout, so you can change the color, as well as the type of paper. If you go to view, you can change how you want to view the paper, whether it's horizontal or vertically. Info is just the info of the document, and if you select help, it will just direct you to its website so you can seek further help from there. If you select the rectangular icon on the top right, you can look at all the pages that you currently have. You can bookmark your favorite pages, which you will find on the bookmark icon, and you can search for words that are written in the document. So the thing about notability is that it does not support the hand recognition feature by default. So if you type in the word, you only search out those that you have typed, rather than those that are written down. So as you can see right here, it didn't highlight the good that I wrote, that I had written on. If you want hand recognition features, you have to go to the store and buy it. It's to the right of the question mark icon that you see on the bottom left. So you click on it, and go to technology, then you can get the hand recognition feature right here. Since I'm at the store, I might as well show you what the store has to offer. The feature page is just some of the key points of the other four rows that you see below. So let me just talk about the other four rows instead. So for themes, you can buy different themes, as you can see right here. For technology, you can support math conversion, as well as hand recognition feature. You can also buy planners, as well as some stickers that you want, to perhaps add some color to your notes. A feature that you will see when you screen record is this icon right here. This is the laser function. So if you select it, it can let you guide your viewers through the content that you are following through. So this is the non-laser tail method. So you just track your screen motion. But if you hold the laser tail, then you will select every, then you will follow through everything that you have written down, and you will disappear after some inactivity. Do split screen mode on notability. We have to drag the left side of the screen to the right to show a list of documents. After that, click on the triple dot. You can choose to view your second document on the left or on the right. So this is how you do speed screen mode in Notability. So finally, I want to talk about exporting files, which is this icon right here. If you click on it, you can create a public link or share through these avenues. If you select other apps, you can also change the format of your document through these four options. Or you can also edit your PDF options right here. So if you select share note, you have all these options available for you. And you can also send it to other note-taking apps as well. So that's all I have to share about notability. I hope that you found this video useful, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.